Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and it's World Watercolor Month. And here today, we're doing an interactive rainbow slider card. First, I want to show you the other new fun stuff from Ellen Hudson that's just released. First, unicorns and rainbows and die cuts to go with them. Fabulous sentiments because Julie Eversole has the best sense of humor ever. And I, I don't know about anybody else, but do you read her sentiments in her voice when you hear her say something? I certainly do because she's amazing and she's hilarious and it just makes me laugh when I think of her saying any of these things. I will be using the mermaid very soon, so that is on the schedule for this month. But today I'm going to use the rainbow slider. That middle part makes the rainbow, then there's a tab that you pull, and then this other little piece makes the window. And the little tabs line up and stuff. You'll see how that works when I get the whole thing done. But first, the rainbow itself. I'm going to throw a little piece of scratch paper under here and try not to color on each one of the other panels so I can color all the way to the edge without getting color on the wrong little strip of color. Now there are not the right number of Roy G. Biv colors so you get to pick which ones you want to use. And I've made my selections here and I'm also going to put a little extra shading on the outside edges and just do a little blendy blendy to make them work nicely. And then I'll just keep moving that little scratch paper and I only have to be careful at the very edges not to lean my marker down too heavily and get some color on the next panel. Now as for why this is a watercolor month card, you can only see rainbows when there's water in the air because the light goes through like a mist of rain and then you see the rainbow coming through. So that's why this is a watercolor card, watercolor month card. So I hope nobody has a problem with me making that kind of a stretch, but I really wanted to use this die set and I totally spaced. I could have done this with my Zig clean color markers and called it watercolor that way, but you know, I was already in process with the Copics, so there you go. So now that I have that part done, I'm going to color the ends of them. You could do a bunch of different things. You could either mask them off if you want them white. I'm going to go with black for a contrast on my card. I think most people are probably going to go for white because the whole craft industry is all about white and bright and I like the contrast of really strong color with black. So what I'm also doing is coloring the back side with just one color of each one of these colors. So on the when the rainbow is bent up, you're going to get to see the color on both sides of it. So the, the rainbow panel gets glued onto the tab panel. And in order to get my tab panel prepared, I decided I'd also go a little crazy with the Copic markers and make a rainbow on that. Because I am going to put a sentiment on that as a little surprise when the person opens the card and pulls that little tab. So I'm starting just throwing some colors on here, a yellow, an orange, and a red. They're some of the same colors from the earlier mix if you're interested in figuring out what colors. But I'm not going to stress out too much about the purples not blending together. They didn't go real well because my markers were on the dry side. But I realized later you're not going to see that part. So I was kind of stressing out for nothing trying to get them to blend. So there you go. So I'm just going to go backwards now, the same progression of colors, and start to pull those colors back together again. Go over the red, and then the purple, the red, and the purple. That's how you would get a blend like that if you needed it to be super smooth. I only needed it to be faintly smooth, so I didn't need to stress out very much over that deep part. I will stress out a little more on the other end because that end's going to pop out of my card. So I'm going to work a little harder on getting my red to blend together with my orange and then working on the orange blending into the yellow to try to get them relatively smooth. And all that really takes is just a lot of ink. If you're not prepared to do a lot of ink, then leave your panel white or black or whatever color you wish. So now I'm going to take some Be Creative tape. I love Be Creative tape for interactive cards. And on the back side is where you're going to stick it for this particular end. So you're going to put adhesive on the other end, but you're going to put it in a different place. 
So you want it centered, and I'm going to center it right here so that my arrow shows. And that meant a little change for me. I did have to fix something because now that it's that far down, I didn't center it completely, then I do have to trim off a little of the back end. And if you end up doing that same thing, you'll see what I mean. But the adhesive for the second piece goes on top, as you can see there in the picture. You need to have your card base and you need to have this panel on the top. So this is the panel that's going to get glued on top of the card base. And I've got my sentiment stamped on there already and this is the place that makes the window. So now I've got the window with the little thumb hole and that's going to line up with this other thumb hole. And if your thumb hole makes the back end not stick out a little bit like mine does, just trim that piece off. But I wanted that little yellow tucked in a little bit. So that means mine hung, hung out on the left a little bit and I just had to trim that off. No big deal, super easy to do. So snip, 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 and we're ready to roll. But that front piece now that is glued to the top panel of the rainbow piece. And I'm gonna put a bunch of adhesive along the back side. And in order to get that tab not to stick to the sides of the dimensional adhesive. I put a little of the powder tool along there before removing my paper so that it'll be a little less sticky right along that edge. And then put this whole panel onto my card base. Now you could also opt to not have a card base. You could just make your whole message on the tab panel and maybe put a panel on the back to write a longer message if you want. But you wouldn't actually have to have a full card base then I put a little piece of twine through the arrow on my, my little tab panel that you're supposed to pull and tucked it all down nice and the card is finished. So check out how cool this is. The rainbow lifts up and makes an arc. Isn't that cool? Make today a glitter filled day of rainbows and unicorn farts. Isn't that special? So see how pretty that is when that goes up and down and you don't see very much of that purple that didn't blend really well, but you also get a nice view of the underside of the rainbow colors and you get to see those when the card is open. So I like the fact that I actually did remember to put the color on the inside as well as on the outside. So all the links for all the supplies are in the doobly-doo down below. And I will see you again for another World Watercolor Month video next time. Thanks so much and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.